In this video what I'm going to do is show you one of the most often asked questions that we get with regards to cloth effects and that is how you do multi-layer cloth. How you have a shirt inside of a coat or something along those lines um, and in this example I'm just going to do something very very simple. I've got what would be kind of a very crude arm that is bending over time. And I'm going to apply what would basically be two sleeves, two loops of, of cloth to show you how this works. So, as I would normally do, go ahead and create a couple of splines. So something like that. Let's make this a little bit wider. And then move it up. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to create a second loop of cloth that would sit basically over the top and a little bit further out. Okay, so in this case let's rename this to cloth01 and let's change its color so we can tell what it is and this one's going to be cloth02 and I'll change its color to orange so we know about it and I'm going to hide this one because I don't need it right now. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this first bit of cloth and naturally the first thing I need to do is change it to an editable spline. Go into vertex subobject mode, make all these corners and break them as I normally do. Then I'll throw garment maker on top and you see I get this nice clean cornered edges out of here which is uh, very nice and I'll leave it as at its default settings because it looks like the well the triangles might be a little big here for this arm so I'm gonna bring that up a little bit well, that might have been a bit too much let's go 1.4 see how that works so those triangles probably look a little bit better overall for the amount of work that I'm gonna do it's still not terribly dense so it's not gonna crush my times for simulations but it's it's thick enough that it won't shouldn't interpenetrate with the the arm as it's moving so next we'll add cloth effects actually before I do that let me actually delete this out I did forget to do something let me go into panel subobject mode in fact I forgot to do two things I'm gonna select the panel and I'm gonna make it a curved surface and in this viewport I want to watch it whoops going the wrong way minus 0.2 so something like that and then in seam subobject mode whoops in fact I rolled it up that's not good there we go now in seam subobject mode, select. Let's actually select just those edges, shall we? Grab that one and that one, and we'll hit create seam. So we're going to have a seam that's going to pull those two things together. All right, so now we've got our mesh set up. Let's go ahead now. Let's add cloth effects, and we'll tell the cloth to be cloth and we'll hit OK and I've got a fairly big it's like 250 units so the centimeters per unit in order to be an arm would be fairly small so I've reduced that down quite a bit I'm gonna turn gravity off because I just want to have this cylinder basically pulled together so I'm gonna hit simulate local damped and let that kind of simulate out Okay, now I'm going to turn off use sewing springs and simulate local again. There we go. So now I've got what basically amounts to a, uh, a loop of cloth around the arm. And before I actually start the simulation, I'm going to simulate local damped with gravity on so it collides with my object. 
Now it looks, yeah, I think that I had just a little bit. In fact, I don't think I even had it turned on. So let's reset the state. Oh, and there I made a mistake. So now you can see what happens when you forget to check your cloth effect state. So now I've got these kind of unwanted edges because I have sewing springs turned off and I reset the state and the state was back to here in Garment Maker. Not a good idea to do that. So let's turn sewing springs back on and hit reset state. And now I get the sewing springs back and I get basically get to kind of start that process over. So that's a common mistake. Everybody does it, even I do on occasion. So let's turn gravity off. I'm going to simulate local damped. Let those edges come together the way that they should. And then I will turn off sewing springs. Simulate local again. Let those kind of flatten out into a nice loop. There we go. Now I'll turn gravity on. And before I actually go back through that process, let's add that arm object as a collision object. And I'm going to make its collision like three and a half. Whoops. Three and a half units. Okay. All right. So now I can hit turn gravity back on, which it is down here. And I'm going to simulate local so that the cloth now drapes itself. And I can see how it's going to collide with my cylinder. This is all fairly standard stuff. Okay, so now I've got my loop where I want it. Let's actually save here. Alright, so instead of it being multi-layer start, it's going to be layer 1 placed. Save. Okay, so now I'm ready to start my first simulation. And the way that this works when you do multi-layered clothing is that you simulate in passes. You have to go back through and there's some steps that you need to be aware of. So, let's go ahead and make sure everything is set up. Self-collision is on, sewing springs are off, gravity is on. We've got the collision objects. Do we have the cloth properties the way we want them? We can just check. Everything looks good here. The arm, static friction. I might actually bring that up considering it's supposed to be on the arm. And Dynamic friction might come up just a bit. And I'll go ahead and hit simulate. And instead of boring you guys with uh, watching a simulation run, I'll go ahead and pause this video and uh, be back in a moment. All right, so now that it's done, you can see I have a piece of cloth that kind of folds up and comes down on itself. Okay, so I've got, I've got a simulation done here of the inner cloth. And again, I tend to like to save, so layer one simmed. That way, in case I mangle something horribly later on, I have a, a point to come back to. And that's, uh, that's important when you're doing cloth simulations. Save, saving is a good thing, as I've said on many occasions in this video. Okay, so now we've got one layer of cloth done. Let's bring out the other cloth. So I'm going to unhide my cloth 2 spline. 